In this tutorial by the gamesmith, we will create a main menu that's controlled by the arrow keys instead of the default cursor selection. So let's not waste any more time and jump straight into the video. So I just gone through Photoshop and created six icons for the buttons, for options, one normal state and the other on the selected state. I did so for the quit and start buttons, also for the selected state and the normal state. And I've created this simple background. So one way of doing this is to create a new UI button and then adjust its position After that, we will be removing the text layer. After removing the text layer, we'll be changing its shape. Set native sprite size, adjusting the scale. After that, in the button script, we'll change the transition from color tint to sprite swap. In the highlighted sprite, we'll drag and drop our start selection. And then in the press sprite, We'll also drag and drop the start selection and then changing the navigation from automatic to be explicit. We'll duplicate this button one more time, change the sprite to be the option sprite, lowering its position a little bit. After that, we'll drag and drop the option selected sprite to the highlighted state and the pressed state. Then we'll have the button duplicated one more time, but this time we'll be using the quit sprite. We'll do the same by lowering its position and changing the selected and press sprites to be the quit selected. Now once we're done, you'll see here under the navigation there are new fields appearing select on up and select on down. So on up in this case means on pressing the up arrow and on down on pressing the down arrow. So what we'll be doing is that we'll drag the options button and drag it on up. And we'll do the start button to be on pressing down. We'll do the same with the options button. So we'll drag our start button and drop it on select on up. For the quit button we'll drop it on the select on down. Finally, for the start button, we'll select our quit button to be select on up and the options on select on down. Now, once you start the game and then pressing either of the up arrow and the down arrow, you'll see that nothing is happening. Because in this setup, you will have to first press the button you want to select and then use the arrow keys to be able to change the selection form. So it's not useful by any way. However, to get over this, there's another way. So first of all, let's just arrange the scene. I'll drag the background, reset it, and start by dragging the start button, both the selected and the normal states. Let's set the order and layer to one for both of them. And I will be resetting the position. This is to get them exactly over each other. And just please be sure that when you design those buttons, you have them at the same exact dimensions. Uh, after that, I will create an empty game object. I'll call it start button. And I will drag and drop both of the start selected and not selected icons inside of it. After that, I'll just adjust its size here. To for example 0.75 by 0.75 and I'll drag it to the bottom a little bit. I'll also do the same for the options. Set the order and layer to 1 and reset the position for both of them. Again I will be creating an empty game object calling them options button and set in both the selected and non-selected sprites inside of it. 
Reset the size to 0 0.75 by 0 0.75. Set it down a little bit. And finally, we'll do the same to the quit. Order in layer to one and reset in position. Again, order in layer to one and reset in the position. Finally, I'll also create an empty game object calling it quit button. And set in both the selected and not selected sprite inside of it. Adjusting the size and position as normal. Let's just add some space between them. So as you can see now, we have all the sprites here set in the scene. I will go inside each of those buttons and deactivate the selected state. Now, as you can see, it's almost set up. And then after that, I'll create a C Sharp script. Let's call it main menu controllers. And open it in Visual Studio. Once it's open, we will need to set up a public game object. And we'll set it to be start sprite and another public game object and we'll call it start selected and then after that and just to be arranging and categorizing the fields in the inspector I will be setting a space between each two fields that space will be a value of 10 and I will be given this a header with the name I'll call it start then I'll copy this and paste it twice but each time I'll be setting the but each time I'll be setting the header name to be corresponding to the button, I will be interacting with these variables. So here it will be options. And instead of start sprite, it will be option sprite. And instead of start selected, it will be option selected. We'll do the same with the final variable, it will be quit. And here it will be quit sprite. And again, quit selected. And above all of that, we'll be declaring a float, which we'll call selection. Then we'll go to the start function. And we'll set selection to be equal to 1. So this will set our selection value to 1 whenever the game is started. And after that, as we'll be controlling the main menu through the arrows, so we'll be setting here if input dot get key down. And that key is the up arrow, for example. We will do some stuff and again if input dot get key down but this time the key code shall be down arrow and this will have another consequences so for the first if statement we will add another if statement so if selection is less than or equal to 3 which is the maximum number of buttons we have in this case we'll be increasing our selection by 1 else if 
our selection is greater than 3, we will need to set the selection to be equal to 1 again. Now we'll copy those subconditions and paste them inside the down arrow function. However, we'll change the first statement to be greater than or equal to 1. In this case, we will need to decrease the selection value. For the second statement, we want it to be lower than 1 and we will set it back to 3. After that, we will need to check if selection is equal to 1 or if it's equal to 2 or finally if it's equal to 3. So um, if it's equal to 1, we want our start sprite dot set active to be false and we want our start selected dot set active to be true. Then for our option sprite as it will not be selected, we want to show the non-selected sprite. So dot set active, we'll set this to be true. However, for the options selected, it will be false. And that will be the same case with the quit. So quit sprite dot set active is true and the quit selected dot set active will be false. Now copy the same conditions and paste them in the other two statements. For the selection equal to, which is in our case the option selected, we want to set our start sprite to be true and our start selected will be false in this case. However, for the option sprite, it will be false for the not selected phase. And for the selected will be true. We won't do any changes to the quit sprite, but we'll do the same for our selection three, which is the quit. We want to set start sprite to be true, start selected to be false. We'll leave the option sprite and option selected as they are. For the quit sprite, we want to deactivate the quit sprite not selected, so we'll set it to false. And for the quit selected, it will be true. Now let's go over the script one more time to check what it will be doing. Here we've declared the sprites for each of our buttons cases. Here we set the selection variable to 1 so that whenever the game starts, the start button will be selected by default. Here we're checking if there is an input of the up arrow. We will be increasing the selection by 1 if it's less than 3. I'm sorry, that's a mistake. Here will be the down arrow. And here it will be the up arrow. So now after the fix, whenever the player presses the down arrow, the selection will be transferred to the lower option. And whenever he presses the up arrow, the selection will be moving upwards. However, when it reaches any of the extremes, first option or the last option, and then the player presses the up arrow in case of the first option, the menu will be resetting itself back to get the selection to the lowest option in the menu. And if he was already at the lowest option and presses the down arrow, the selection will reset and select the topmost option. Now let's save the script and return back to Unity. Once we're back in Unity, we'll create a new 
empty game object and we'll call it menu control. We'll add the menu controller script to it, drag and drop each of the sprites to its corresponding field. Now once we're done, run the game and you'll see it's working perfectly. Thank you for watching, if you learned something new today, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is the Gamesmith and as usual, see you in the next one.